And Medea, I know uh, Tyler Perry said he was imitating who again? His aunt. His aunt. That, that, uh, he grew up in the church with. Grew up in the church with. Now why he had it dressed like his aunt for? And he's a man. He's already funny. But why dress like a woman? Because see, what he's really doing, really, that Medea, that, that, that name Medea, that came from that witch whose name was Medea back in the 1600s. That's why Hollywood is blowing up Tyler Perry because, because Hollywood, who are full of devil worshippers, nothing but witches and warlocks and Illuminatis and making the pyramid signs, they know about this witch Medea back in the 1600s. So Tyler Perry got that name really from that witch Medea. But then he's also dressing like a woman. So now men are looking up to this man dressing like a woman. So they're talking about, well, he's successful with it. And God is blessing him. No, ain't God blessing him. The devil is the one blessing him. Right. It's a gay demon that's blessing Tyler Perry. It ain't God. Amen. God ain't going to bless sin when God hates sin. How God going to bless something that he hate? When God said it's a what? An abomination. And then Tyler Perry, he, you know, he came into the J church and gave him a million dollars. So, you know, Bishop Jakes ain't going to tell Tyler Perry to repent from that mess because Tyler Perry gave him a million dollars. And Jakes was so happy. He going like this. He up there falling on the floor. And Tyler Perry, they laying hands on him. And Jakes going like this on the floor. That wasn't no Holy Ghost. That wasn't the spirit. He was just happy because he got a million dollars because this man, just like Medea, gave Bishop Jakes a million dollars. Listen, I ain't selling out for no money. People are selling out for money. Now they allow all this stuff to go on in the church world. It's all in the Pentecostal world. Homosexuals in the choir. Homosexuals who are bishops. Homosexuals preaching the gospel. Got gay lovers on the side and think because you're a bishop that you're going to heaven. No, you're going straight to hell if you don't repent. It's time to repent. Amen. I meant bishops who are prelays and overseers. And, and, and let me tell you, look what the Lord has shown me. There are people uh, in the organizations, there's different organizations. The Lord began to show me this who sold out to that lifestyle. Even women who in that lifestyle. They got young men who wants to be bishops now, but they have to have an affair with a, an apostle who's in that gay lifestyle. Then they have these affairs on the sides, and they develop that effeminate spirit. He can preach, but he has that effeminate spirit. He's a bishop, but he got the Got it. See, I can't. Cause see, I'm masculine. I'm not even gonna try to even act like that. Can you say amen to somebody? Amen. But they got, <laughs> but they got that effeminate spirit. And now they all in the choir. They all in the music world. I played the bass. I know what I'm talking about. I used to play for different choirs as well as preaching the word. Most of them are in that lifestyle and don't want to repent. And many think because they can sing that they're going to heaven. It takes more than being a good singer. You got to live holy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, "Be holy, for I am holy." He didn't say homo. It said, be what? Holy. Being holy and homo are two different things. Can you say amen to somebody? Amen. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You got even now, Masons are involved in that stuff. You got Masons, even in the church world, who Eastern stars are the woman version of the Masons. This stuff ain't being preached on enough. I'm going to tell you some information that's going to help you. They got people who are Masons. That's in that lifestyle. Eastern stars. Signing contracts with the devil. Do you know... I found out that now men who wants to join the Masonic Lodges, they got a new initiation right where the men got to dress like a woman now. Wow. Yeah, they had something new where they wear a wig and a lipstick and, 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 and makeup and got to dress like a woman to, in order to become a Mason. Wow. And when they become a Mason, they get power. They own buildings, they own land, they in it for power. Right there, you just sold your soul to the devil. And there's a lot of sitting up in the pulpits. Let me tell you what pulpit means. Pulpit really means to go in the pit and pull the souls out the pit. That's what pulpit really means. Amen. Not the natural pulpit. There's a lot of folks sitting on the natural pulpit on a Sunday morning, but he's not in the spiritual pulpit going in the streets and preaching in the streets. When you preach in the streets and do an outreach ministry, what you're really doing is going in the pit and pulling the souls out the pits. Amen. Can you say amen to somebody? Because now the church world is so full of sin. You don't know which church now is real. Just because the church is packed with people, it doesn't mean the Holy Ghost is there. Can you say amen to somebody? Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Praise the Lord. Where God's spirit is, is a holy church. It's a sanctified church. And he said, be holy for I am holy. He didn't say homo. Come on, tell someone gay is not the way. 
Jesus is the way. Shh. Baby tried to say that Jesus was gay. They was even talking about that. Uh, that Jesus was having an affairs with his disciples. The devil is a liar. Jesus was holy. Amen. He was holy. Praise the Lord. He was righteous. Knowing the word of God where it says that Jesus ever had an affairs with the disciples. These Roman Catholic churches now that's full of these homosexuals that get gay priests. You know I'm telling the truth. This is no sophisticated message. This is not a shout and dancing message. But this is truth. You got these gay priests raping little boys in the Catholic churches. And want to turn young men to be gay. Want to turn young women to be gay. So we're praying for these little boys. A lot of them got molested, got raped, so we praying that God will heal your broken heart. Can you say amen to somebody? Because God can still set you free. He don't want to see you go to hell. He don't want to see you burn in the lake of fire. This is why God had me preaching this way. Not to condemn you, but he want to let you know the right ways. Jesus is the way and gay is not the way. Can you say amen to somebody? And they allow this stuff to go on even in the Catholic churches. And now this spirit has even crept in the Pentecostal churches. I met bishops who, who wear them Catholic robes and the big priestly hat and got the long stick. I met a lot of them personally who was in the gay lifestyle. I had preached in many of their churches. Praise, I'm not going to mention no names. I pray that you repent. I pray that you come to Jesus. You don't want to hear the Lord say, I never knew you. You don't want to hear the Lord say, uh, I never knew you. Depart from me. He workers of iniquity. You want to hear the Lord say, well done. My good and faithful servant, well done. Not, I never knew you because you wouldn't repent out that lifestyle. Praise the Lord. Lord, oh Lord, tell us, Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Lord, help me, Lord. Lord, forgive me for my sins. I repent of my sins. Even those who are not gay, repent from the lust and the envy and the pornography and the jealousy and the lying on each other. Lord, I repent because God is coming back for a holy people. We don't know when he's coming back. But going back to what I was about to say, I meant bishops in different churches who was in that lifestyle. They were nothing but masons. Had the Catholic robes and still preaching the gospel, but they had a King Tuck statue. Lord Jesus. What do King Tuck have to do with the King of Kings? Come on, somebody. King Tuck back in the day, who was who was really real, never worshipped the Jehovah God. He was worshiping false gods, the Egyptian gods. Now you know according to the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 30, you already know God was against Egypt because he was worshiping all these false gods. Wow. Ramses, Pharaoh, was against Israel. He was the one that enslaved Israel. And so God sent Moses, hallelujah, to set Israel free from slavery. And he gave most of the commandments on Mount Sinai to give to Israel. But I met bishops in the organization who can preach the word, but had a king such statue in the office. I could understand that. I said, wait a minute, how this man is anointed bishop, but got a king Tuck statue? Do you know that King Tuck statues is connected with the Illuminatis? For worshiping false gods? Allah had drawn the Illuminatis. You all heard of the Illuminatis before. These are devil worshipers. They're in the church world. And a lot of them are into that homosexual lifestyle. Amen. I remember one time I was invited to preach in New Jersey. They asked me to do a, a service in New Jersey at this church. It was a well-known church. And, 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 and they said, you know, preacher Wally wants you to come preach the word and you know, we love the way you preach and, and, and not realizing God made them ask me to preach. Sometimes people ask me to preach and didn't know why they was asking me to preach. Because there was sin in that place. That he wanted me to cry out against sin so God can give them a chance to repent. Like he gave Nineveh a chance to repent from sin when he said, Jonah. And I remember I went in that church to preach. It was a beautiful church. And they introduced me to the bishop. And the bishop was just as gay as he can be. To praise a lot of bit, preaching why. Oh, this man but a fact. Big old giant black fact. And the man was a millionaire. A millionaire who sold his soul to the devil and slept with other men just to get rich and famous. The man was gay. Red lipstick. All the long fingernails like a woman. I was shocked. And the man was a bishop. Then he had all them gays up on the pulpit. I said, what kind of mess is this? And the Lord had me preach against that spirit. They never invited me back ever since. <laughs> But at least I did what the Lord had told me to do. Amen. Praise the Lord. They ain't repent. They're going to hell. Hell is real. Gay is not the way. Jesus is the way. 
Praise the Lord. Many of you men who are in the gay lifestyle, many of you women who act like men, got them dykes on the side, lesbian lovers on the side, and you in the pool, but talking about you an evangelist wearing a skirt so short that your thighs is out and got them long fake eyelashes and got them long giant figure. That, Honey, don't be laying hands on me. You ain't going to be scratching me up. Can you say amen to somebody? And you call yourself a prophetess or calling the book of Revelation chapter number two, verse 20. He was against the pastor of the church. He said, I have a few things against thee. Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter number two, verse number 20. Jesus was angry at the pastor of the church for allowing Jezebel, who called herself a prophetess, go around seducing God's servants to commit fornication. Let's go to the book of, uh, we praise God for all of y'all who joined me today. We have in church this morning. Amen. God bless all of y'all. We thank God for people of God who love the truth. Amen. He shall know the what? The truth. And the truth shall make you free. free. Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter number 2. Uh, verse 20. Verse number 20. Uh, now, Jesus here was talking to the angel of the church. The angels, uh, pastors are also called angels. He was not talking about God's heavenly angels. We're not talking about God's heavenly angels. Pastors are also called what? Angels. They're also called shepherds. God had placed them to be the shepherd of the church. So here Jesus was talking to the pastor of the church. Look what he said. He was upset. Look what he said in Revelation chapter number 2 verse 20. Read. Notwithstanding I have a few things against thee. Notwithstanding I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that Woman Jezebel. Thou suffers that woman who? Jezebel. Jezebel. You know who Jezebel was. Jezebel back in the Old Testament was a wicked queen. Esther was a righteous queen, but Jezebel was a wicked queen. She killed the prophets. She seduced different men. She was seductive. Had her breasts out. Everything showing. That's going on now, even in the church world. I don't understand how a woman can talk about she got the Holy Ghost and show her breasts all over the Instagram. And knowing you have a husband. Only one who, only one who should be seeing your breasts. Is your husband? Can you say amen to somebody? Amen. Not dressing loose. Somebody talking about, oh, the Lord, uh, he don't judge the outer appearance. Oh, yes, he do. Because if you got the Holy Ghost, he wants you to be holy on the outside and holy on the inside. Say amen to somebody. Amen. He will teach you what to wear and not what to wear. When you have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost bring what? Conviction. Yes, it does. I know my wife said something one time. What did the Holy Ghost tell you about your dress code a long time ago? When Sunday I was on my way to church and before I left the house, I put on a suit yeah. and it was a little too tight. I had to gain some weight. Yeah. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, go change that suit. Mm. And I went and changed the suit. I was obedient and I felt convicted. My God, you was convicted because you knew that suit you was wearing was too tight. Yes. See, that's what the Holy Ghost would do. See, some of you folks don't have the Holy Ghost. When you really get the Holy Ghost, God gives you conviction. Say amen to somebody. Amen. He'll tell you what to wear and not what to wear. He said, take off that mini skirt. That's too short. Amen. Sew up that split in the back. Sew it up. I get another skirt. Mm -hmm. That's not going to be no split in the back. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard for some of you men to even sit up in the church because you got all these half-naked women up in the church who got a split of Jezebel. A lot of them even talking about the evangelists. How you evangelists wear all this makeup and makeup represents Jezebel. When you got the Holy Ghost, you're already beautiful. You don't need makeup. He said, I beautify the meek with my salvation. Let your light shine. You're already beautiful. Now they look like prostitutes. You don't so you don't realize that makeup represents Jezebel. It don't mean you were Jezebel, but it's what it represents. So if you have the Holy Ghost, you don't need to wear all that. When you have the Holy Ghost, he brings conviction. Take that off. Cover this up. Amen. Wouldn't it like me coming to church, preaching the word, and got my chest out? You know, I don't got that many muscles, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I be trying to show off my muscles. I'm on the pulpit with my all this out. That don't look right. That's worldly. I don't understand how some of these bishops got tattoos on. The Bible even talks about that in the book of Leviticus, chapter 20, verse 28. Read it. It talks about uh, not supposed to be putting marking your body with all that stuff. I I met preachers looking like pips who got tattoos. But that's not, but that, but I'm on a but I'm on a, on a different subject now about Jezebel. But I just wanted to go that way. Amen. But look what he said to the, to the pastor of the church. Watch this. Look, okay. Revelation chapter two verse twenty. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, yeah, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. They was eating things, sacrificing the idols, worshiping Baphomet. 
Do you know Masons worship a demon named Baphomet? Do you know most of these Hollywood stars worship a demon named Baphomet? They're with the Illuminati. They're doing devil worship. Even a lot of NBA stars like LeBron James and Seth Curry and even Kobe Bryant. I hate to say it, even though we love Kobe Bryant and we and, and it's sad how him and his daughter die in the helicopter crash. But Kobe Bryant already knew he was going to die like that. It was an Illuminati sacrifice. It was a blood sacrifice. These people worship a demon by the name of Balfamet. These were Satanists. Well, a lot of these Satanists are either in the church world. And, and a lot of these Satanists in the church world who's in the pulpit are living the gay lifestyle. See, when a man lies with another man right there, he already sold his soul to the devil. Because the Bible says it's an abomination. Watch this now before I go any further. Satan doesn't want men to be masculine. See, men was created in the image and likeness of God. The image of God is masculine. The image of God is holy. But since Satan is jealous of God, he wants to be as the most high God. According to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 14, we all know that God cast him out of heaven. Satan hates God. Satan is jealous of God. So he know he cannot beat God. So he wants to try to destroy the image of God in man by trying to make man act like a woman. That was not the image that God put in man. He made man to be masculine and holy. Praise the Lord. And then uh, God made the woman to be feminine, not effeminate. Amen. Hear the difference. Amen. God made the woman to be feminine. Yes. See, she got the nice girlish ways. You, you, you a lady. I thank God for my wife. She's a lady. She don't walk like a man. Amen. She ain't looking like no man. That's what attracted me to her. She, she has a lady ways. She's holy. Praise the Lord. And I know you love your wives. They're, they're, they're ladies. They ain't acting like no man and trying to get big muscles like a man and getting a six pack like a man. Women not looking like uh, these women now look like men now. Lord Jesus. Back in the day, Wonder Woman looked like a lady. Now they got women looking like men. Oh, God. Praise the Lord. It's, 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 uh, that ain't how Eve looked back in the day. Eve, Eve didn't have that spirit. Of, she didn't have a masculine spirit. That's a spirit. That's a demonic spirit. That's right? That's possessing men to want to be gay. Satan wants to corrupt the image of God in man to make man act like a woman, and he wants to make the woman act like a man. God took the woman out the man's side and created what? Woman. Amen. Praise the Lord. So that's a demonic spirit. So there's all kind of Jezebel spirits in the church. I met women pastors. Well, I don't believe in women pastors. I believe God can use women as a prophetess, as a missionary. A God, because some of the greatest women of God I, I met has been such a blessing to me. Our mothers of the church. But we know the Bible says that a woman is not supposed to serve authority over the man. Okay. Amen. And many of you don't believe that. But I met women pastors who are not but lesbians. Dykes in the pulpits. And she hacking like a man. Huh? And the Lord said, huh? and he's real. Lord Jesus, have mercy. Oh, Lord Jesus. Ooh. Has a voice like a man. Mm. Acting like a man. Oh, Bull dacker. Now you know that can't be godly. That's a Jezebel spirit. And then I met these women preachers who went around seducing different young ladies in their church and don't want to see the women get married. Lord Jesus. You ever been to those churches where it gets all women? You see no men in that? Well, naturally, women outnumber men, though. <laughs> but I've been to churches where I was asked to minister at, and the Lord had me warn them. When you saw all women, you didn't see no men in that. Lord, have didn't want to see the women getting married. They wanted to make the women turn against the men. Is that woman live spirit and want to make them lesbians. Oh, I'm talking some deep stuff here. Amen. That might be the Amazons with the Wonder Woman thing on, on Paradise Island. Amen. Remember Wonder Woman? And, and, and that DC comic book, there was nothing but a bunch of lesbians. Wonder Woman represent a lesbian spirit. Well, that lesbian spirit have crept even in the churches now. They in the pulpit, just like got a lot of men bishops that are in a homosexual lifestyle and don't want to repent. Gay is not the way, Jesus is the way. So look what he said. Look Now look what Jesus said in the book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 20. Look what he said. Again, read again. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. He has something against the pastor. Because thou suffereth that woman, woman Jezebel which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. She went around seducing men in the church. Men seducing men. Men or women seducing women. That's that gay demon that's even in the churches child molesting little boys. Child molesting little girls. 
And now that spirit jumped on the children and now they turn out what? Gay. Yes. Now look what Jesus said. Keep going. And I gave her space to repent. He gave her space to repent. Of her fornication. Of her fornication. And she repented not. And she not. That's even talk about the women who call themselves evangelists and even men who call themselves preachers of the gospel. They went around seducing women in the church. They went around seducing men in the church. Seducing them. That's a, that's a deceiving spirit. Now look what Jesus said here in the book. Of verse, uh, of verse 21 of the book of Revelation chapter number 2. Look what he said. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not. He gave her time to repent because God didn't want to see them go to hell. He even gave Jezebel time to repent. Amen. He didn't, that, what a loving God. Yes, he, is. he don't want to see nobody go to hell because hell is that bad. Somebody told me, oh, oh hell can't be that bad. We got hell here on earth. Hell is horrible. Don't even try to go to hell. Because if you go there, you will be sorry. And the lake of fire is even worse than hell. Read the book of Revelation, chapter number 20, verse 14. John said, and I saw death and hell cast in the lake of fire. A lot of people thought that hell and the lake of fire is the same. But it's not. Hell and the lake of fire is separate. If you read the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 14, like I said earlier. Verse 14. John said, and I saw death and hell cast where? In the lake of fire. So as bad as hell is, the lake of fire is even worse. It's a place for the wicked. It's a place, it's a place for gays who don't want to repent. Along with those who are murderers, liars, child molesters, people who are jealous, folk who are involved into witchcraft. This Jezebel, God gave her time to repent. But the Bible says she did not repent. Look what he's going to say. Watch. Behold, I will cast her into a bed and then... And them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. Mm, Jesus said this? Yes. Keep going. Except they repent of their deeds. Now, verse 23. Now, this is the part that a lot of preachers don't preach. Mm -hmm. We're about to go into verse 23 of Revelation chapter 2. We know that Jesus Christ is love, right? But a lot of things he don't love. Now, this is the part a lot of folk don't know about Jesus. Look, go to verse 23. And I will kill her children. Oh, he said, I will what? He said he would kill her children. That don't sound like Jesus to a lot of people. This is what Jesus is love. Mm -hmm. Jesus said he would what? And, and I will kill her children. He said he would kill her children. Keep going. With death. With death. Jesus said this. The same loving Jesus who loved the world said he would kill Jezebel's children because Jezebel was wicked. She was a witch. The different forms of Jezebel. It's not always a woman. Jezebel could be a man. You got male Jezebels. You got men who talk about they bishops and pastors and they got the clergy on and still got a gay lover on the side. And has a wife at the same time. And, and go around seducing young boys in the church. What they got now. Now the reason why Jesus said he would kill the children because the children would come out just as wicked as Jezebel. The children would turn out wicked. Why do you think a lot of these children turn out wicked? The parent is wicked. Why do you think God told Saul through the prophet Samuel to, to, to destroy the whole city, including the children. Uh, and I, I know it sounds horrifying, but there's a lot of wicked children because the parents are wicked. That's why parents, it's important for you to live holy in front of your children. Can you say